The Microsoft Surface Duo, one of the most anticipated phones of the year, is now shipping to customers. What is so special about this phone? Well, it's a foldable smartphone designed by Microsoft and the Surface hardware team. So it looks like it's part of the Surface laptop family of devices that run Windows, uh, but it runs Android with a custom launcher and a custom skin Microsoft has designed. So it's kind of neat to see Microsoft work with Google and because we can't leave Apple out, there's an iMac in the background just for the Apple fans. If we lift off the top of the box, we'll find the Surface Duo right on top, folded closed, but looking good. Next up is an included bumper case for the Surface Duo. This is gonna help protect the corners and the sides of the Duo from drops, scratches, scuffs. It's not gonna be great for like seriously big drops, especially on hard surfaces, but still it's great to see this bumper case included with the purchase. Now there's an assortment of paperwork and a SIM card ejector tool because yes, this is a phone and not a Surface laptop. There's a USB-C charging cable as well as a fairly compact 18 watt fast charging wall wart. That's about it. So if we take a look back at the Surface Duo, my oh my, this is quite a piece of hardware. It's definitely one of the widest phones I've used, yet it doesn't feel particularly chunky because each panel measures in at only 4.8 millimeters thick. In fact, when it's folded closed, it's only 9.9 .9 millimeters thick in total, which is thinner than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with the camera bump measured in. In fact, the camera module of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is just about as thick as one of the panels of the Duo. That's pretty crazy. Now, there's glass all around this device, the front and the back. It feels really nice, and the hinge is interesting because it allows you to fold it around 360 degrees or anything in between. There are no preset angles, which is really nice. The hinge is feels, at least, it feels rigid enough to hold the panels open, however which way you fold it open or closed. So you can prop this thing up like a tent on your desk to, I don't know, watch a movie, or you could fold it open the other way and make sort of like a mini laptop. And just to appreciate the thinness of this phone, you will see that the USB-C charging port at the bottom is about as thick as one of the panels. So it's really impressive, once again, what Microsoft has done here. Taking a look around the device, there's really not much else except on the right-hand side where we have a SIM card tray, a side-mounted fingerprint scanner, a power button, and a volume rocker. As for the displays, we're looking at two 5.6-inch AMOLED displays with 1350 by 1800 resolutions. Unfortunately, it's not one flexible panel, but there are pros and cons to this. So if you had one panel, you wouldn't be able to bend it backwards into a single panel like you can do with the Duo here. But the downside with having two separate panels is that there's a noticeable bezel between the two panels. More on that later. But the displays, when combined, they measure in at 8.1 inches and they look great. They get nice and bright. They have a pretty high pixel density of about 401 pixels per square inch. And there are some good viewing angles. We'll see that Microsoft has chosen to uh, include their own custom Microsoft launcher, which has a ton of Microsoft apps pre-installed and displayed on the home screens. There's a Google Now-like page to the left that will show all of your synced Microsoft notes, tasks, and calendar events. It feels like if you're invested in the Microsoft Surface family, you should feel right at home, even though this is the Android operating system. And since this is Android, you can, of course, change the launcher, you can customize the apps, the skin, and everything, pretty much. Now, as far as actually using the Duo and its two displays, keep in mind, this is my first look, first impressions. It's a little rough around the edges. What's neat is you can drag an app from one screen to the other really easily and then drag and hold an app between the two displays to expand it to full screen. And when it works, it's pretty smooth and just really cool, for lack of a better word. Um, but it really depends on the application. A lot of the times, uh, bugs will prevent some apps from loading across each screen, or the apps themselves won't be optimized to properly take advantage of the two displays. That's going to be probably the most common and frustrating issue with this device. And the bezels running between the center of the two displays, it creates a not so great experience. I mean, so far, it seems like the best application for the Duo would be running two apps side by side and not in one giant uh, screen. But I'm going to have to wait and see and just use this device more to really get a better understanding of how it works. And if you're worried about power, uh, thankfully, Microsoft included a pretty snappy Snapdragon 855 chipset with six gigabytes of RAM. 
Those are basically last year's flagship specs. So there's plenty of power to run two apps side by side, play some games and multitask efficiently. And to help round out this phone, there is an 11 megapixel f2.0 main camera that doubles as a front facing camera and a main camera, just depending on the orientation of the device. But right off the bat, I'm gonna say it's a little bit awkward switching between the two cameras because sometimes Microsoft's built-in accelerometers don't quite detect which orientation you have the phone. So it doesn't allow you to very consistently switch between the two cameras. Because in theory, you're supposed to just be able to flip over the device, double tap on the other display, and the, the phone should switch displays. But that doesn't work all the time. Now inside, Microsoft has managed to pack a 3,577 milliamp hour battery in this extremely thin phone. And that's not the biggest battery we've seen, uh, definitely not, but early reviews suggest it's actually not too bad and it should support full day of moderate to maybe heavy usage. Once again, we're gonna have to wait and see. So the Surface Duo, it's a beautiful piece of hardware that feels great in the hands. But as with so many devices as of late, it's the software that can make or break it. And upon first impressions, it's not looking great for the Surface Duo, but I'm optimistic Microsoft will be able to patch many of the bugs and help make this phone function as well as it possibly can. For about $1,400, it's definitely too early to say if it's worth it, but generally speaking, it's best to avoid Gen 1 devices, especially ones that cost over a grand. With that said, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this device. Let me know what they are in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're brand new, and I'll see you guys right back here in the next one. See ya.